This is the second of a series of videos on confidence intervals. And this one we want to first start to talk about a, a couple of uh, vocabulary um, terms. And the first one is the idea of a point estimator and a point estimate. Well, the idea of a point estimator, remember an estimator is a process. So a point estimator is simply a process that will yield an estimate of a parameter. And the key is, issue is what makes it a point is that you get a number. So if you, for example, were coming up with a process to estimate average income, you would get a single number, which would be an estimate of the average income. And a point estimate is just actually a single number. A single number, which is an estimate of a population parameter. Now, that's not always that useful. So, for example, let's say you were estimating the average income of an accountant with a four-year college degree and you used X bar and you got $61,000 a year. Well, it's unlikely that this number is exactly right. So rather than a single estimate of what you think the answer might be, what you might want is a range of numbers of which you were fairly confident that the true value fell within then you get what's called a confidence interval. And a confidence interval is a range of numbers let's call it AB. And, but a confidence interval is more than just a range of numbers. It's a range of numbers of which you are fairly confident or confident to a certain degree that the true value falls within those two numbers. So you have a conf for a confidence interval, you have a confidence level and you have a range of numbers. The other thing about a confidence interval is a confidence interval is really made up of two parts. It's made up of a point estimate plus or minus what's called a margin of error. And the margin of error is since gives you an idea of given the point estimate, is there a range of numbers of which you often fall within that given range? And in the next video, we talk about how we calculate and what this margin error margin of error means. Let's go back to a real example. Let's say, for example, you were estimating the average income of accountants, and you got X bar would equal to sixty-one thousand dollars. But let's say uh, you were um, about ninety percent sure that the true value of how much accountants actually make was between $57,000 and let's say $65,000. If you notice here, there's two things about the, the, um, this confidence interval. You have an interval, which is the confidence interval. That's the, the range of numbers. And then you also have a degree of how sure you are, and that's called the confidence level. And though these two things are different concepts, they're, they're um, interrelated. Because if you want the confidence level to go up, then you have to spread out the confidence interval. If you narrow the confidence interval, you're less sure that you truly the true value actually falls there, so the confidence level would go down.
having said that, let's bore into what exactly we mean here with confidence level. So let's ask the question, what does 95% confident mean in terms of statistic? Well, remember, you have mu, which is the true value. And then you have some estimator of mu. Just to be simple, let's say we use sample mean. So that's an estimator, a process. We collect a sample, for example, of 57 students, and we ask them what their GPA is. Or we do a sample of 125 Americans and ask what their average income is. That's the process. Each sample yields a single estimate. So let's think about what we mean when we say 95% confident. What we mean is if we draw repeated samples and from each we construct a confidence interval Then, uh, in 95% of the samples, the confidence interval, the um, the confidence interval. will include the true value, mu. That's what we mean when we say 95% confident. We're, we, we never know if in one given sample if we have the true value, if, if the, the, tr the uh, true value is included in the confidence interval or not. So what 95% confident is, what it means is if we drew repeated samples, repeated samples, and for each one of them we constructed a confidence interval, then in 95% of the cases, the confidence interval will, will include the true value. Let, let, let's draw that for a second. Let's say this is mu. I know you don't know mu, but we're just trying to draw something that gives us the concept. Let's say this is mu and we draw a number of samples and in the first and from each sample we construct a point estimate and then a confidence interval. So let's say in the first one here's our point estimate and here's our confidence interval and in the second one here's our point estimate and here's our confidence interval and in here we get a really low value of x bar, so there's our confidence interval. And here's another one. Now what does this mean? Here's the point estimate, and here is the range uh, that we can be fairly confident about. That's the confidence interval. Let me draw just a few more. So here what we have is we have 10 different point estimates and around each point estimate we constructed a confidence interval. So in this particular example what you see is that mu, the true value mu does in fact in this case fall within the confidence interval as it does here and here but not in this one. In this one we're pretty, pretty confident that the um, true value falls within this range, but in fact it doesn't. In this one it does, in this one it does, in this one it does not. 
and this one it does, this one, and this, this one it does. So in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cases, it does. The mu, the true value, does fall within the confidence interval. And in two cases, it does not. So we say in this particular case that in eight of the ten cases, if this is representative of what's actually happening in, in repeated samples, then we would say that we're 80% confident that in any one given sample, the true values within our confidence interval. And that's the idea of confidence intervals, and um, we'll continue how to construct them in the next video.